I want to preach this morning for a little while and talk to you a little bit about grace in a manger. Grace in a manger. A lot of messages that I preach them, and there'll be a lot of others that are preaching, nothing wrong with them. There'll be a lot of messages that are preached about the manger itself. There'll be a lot of uh, stories and messages preached about where he was laid in a stable. And there will be a lot of things said about the swaddling clothes that he was wearing. A lot will be said about the shepherds who came to see him. But you know, if we can talk about him and the things that surround him, but the one thing that we need to know more than anything else in this all seasons, but as we celebrate the Christmas season. You see, the Christmas season is one time in the year that we get the children's attention more than any other. And so as we get the children's attention, the Christmas we must make sure that we're giving them a clear understanding of the baby in the manger. Just who the baby is. The baby in the manger was grace in the manger. Grace for you and I. In John chapter 1, I want to read this to you. Beginning and reading verse 15. And I want to read through 18. We'll be looking at a lot of other places this morning. And this is John, first of all, he's talking about John. And he said that John bare witness of him, who was him, Jesus Christ. How did he get to be Jesus Christ? He was born in the place of the manger, and he grew up, and he became the Jesus Christ. That Paul's talking about, or John is talking about. It said John bore witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. If you would look at the words in that verse of Scripture, you will find that John was referring to him as a person. A person. Jesus Christ was a person. Because if you look, he used the word him, he, whom, is preferred before me, for he was, he again. This speaks of the person of Christ. Now look at verse 16. And of his fullness. Have all we receive. Grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses. But now listen. The grace and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. And who was Jesus Christ? He was a manger, a baby in the manger. So who was the baby in the manger? It was grace. Grace and truth, he said. And he said uh, in number, verse 18, it says, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, hath declared him. Now in this verse, we see something else. We see the deity of this baby in the nature. We see the deity of who he is. Now, it says here that no man has ever seen God at any time. But he said Jesus has declared him. He has declared him and he's given us a picture of the grace of God. So then, this baby in a manger then was human. But this grace, this baby in a manger was deity also. He was divine. Because he was God. 
That's amazing. That's powerful. When we think about who that baby was. And what did he bring? He brought grace. And as we look at the story, let's look in Luke chapter 2. If you will look there with me. And John, here in the book of John, is proclaiming and introducing the grace of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. But in chapter 2, verse 12, let's look at something here. We get now a report of the grace of God. Look in chapter 2, verse 12. And this shall be a sign unto you, and ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. So then there was a report to the shepherds of the grace of God. And told him, he said, you will find him lying in a manger. What those shepherds found was that they found the grace of God lying in a manger. And in verse 16 of Luke chapter 2, we find, and it says, And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. So then, there was a report of grace in the manger. And it says here, that they came, and they found grace in a manger. Can I say to you this morning, we can get the report of the grace of God. The report's out there. The report of the grace of God is being preached all over the world. But it is of no benefit to you until you find the grace of God. These shepherds found the grace of God. You know how we know they did? Because it says that when they had seen it, they made known abroad the same which was told them concerning the child. And you see, the shepherds returned in verse 20. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and that had seen as it was told unto them. So then there was a report of this grace that was like an angel in the form of a baby named Jesus. So they went and they found this grace lying in the manger. And it made an impact in their life. It made a change in their life. And this morning, if what we need to do is to get people to understand. Over here, under the cross, which represents our truth, we find a symbol of a baby laying in a manger. But I say to you today, you can, you can find that grace. Not just see it. Not just talk about it. But you can find that grace through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what He comes to. Is to bring that grace to us. Now in Luke chapter 1. Turn back there. And I want us to look in verse 28. And I want you to think about this. There's the report of grace, the finding of grace, and the blessings of grace. Now look at what he said in verse 28. And the angel came in unto her, talking about Mary, and said, um, and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. That means you found grace. You found favor. The Lord is with thee. 
and blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. And cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. <coughs> now look what he said. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Now listen. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. You see, in this manger is the grace of God that is truly a blessing to the whole world. It's a blessing to all of us. And it's hard for us to sometimes put this all in the right perspective. How about a little baby in a manger? And right away, I don't know how, how that baby got here anyway. Because Mary was a virgin. She didn't have a little man. What we think about how in the world did that happen? By the grace of God. That's how it There's an interesting phrase in Luke chapter 1, verse 34. And in, in 34 it said, Then Mary said unto the angel, How this shall, how shall this be? Seeing I know not the name. The first thing to think about is, How shall this be? How can this all transpire? How can this all make such a difference in my life and those lives around me? How can this be? And I begin to think. And I begin to go back in my mind. And as Moses stood there in the wilderness in, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 3, and he saw a bush that was burning but was not consumed. Moses turned to see. And in putting in words, words in Moses' mouth, he said, how can this be? How can this be that this bush is on fire and not burning? How can this be this morning? That a baby in a manger would come as a baby and grow up as a, as a child, as a teenager, as an adult and die for me. And die for you. I thought of something else. I thought of, I wonder what Noah said. When God said, build me an ark. And he began to give him the dimensions of it. What is it for Noah had never seen anything like that? And nobody around him had ever seen anything like that. And I'm sure that Moses, who had found grace in the sight of God, how can this? How can this come about? And again, when you're lost and you don't know Christ, and you look at a baby in a manger that, that represents the grace of God, how can this come about? That it makes a difference in my life. It made a difference in Noah's life because Noah started to do He believed what God said. And when God said that He has brought grace and truth 
in the person of Jesus Christ. Believe in Him. Believe that is the grace of God for you and for me in each of our lives. And begin to listen to it. And begin to respond to it as He speaks to you. I wonder when we know I got through. We looked at that. And said, I don't know. I'm not sure. But he got it because he followed God's grace. And God showed him how to do it. I look at myself, and I hope that each of you will look at yourself this morning. How did I become the person that I am? How did I become one who is doing what I'm doing for the Lord Jesus Christ? It certainly was not me. It was certainly not anything about me. But it came, all came about because of that grace. Was in the you see, Noah looked back and he sees what he accomplished. By the grace of God, by listening to God. Today, everything about my life has ever been accomplished. It's because I look back and I say, I knew that you were going to be. God, it is you. It is you. God, why did I quit doing the things I used to do in the beginning of the question? It wasn't me. It was the God who gave me the good things. Those sins that so easily beset us. How do we turn from those sins? By the grace of God that was found in that nature, in the person of Jesus Christ. I begin to think about Moses in the And I begin to think about as he stood there in the bottom. And the Bible says it was dry ground. And yet, on both sides of it, was a huge wall of water. Now you can't tell me that as Moses went through the earth, he said, God, how can you work in this man? <coughs> this came about because of the grace of God. I look at things in my life and and the things I've been through, how did I make it, God? It was because of the grace of God, and that grace was found in me. Grace in me. For all of us, the yeah. loss. I'm not lost. Anymore. And I can remember when I was lost. And I was hopeless. Just like you. Hopeless. And if you don't know Christ today, you're hopeless and lost. And I got new news. The same grace found me. And you can find the same grace that I found in our nature. In the person of Jesus Christ. How do you I think about it? How can this be? So how 
pašu esmu vienam noskaidrotam tiem sāpēm neģi. Ir sāpēm, bet neģi. Is a message. That message is it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable how that message is. Can I read to you? In Revelation chapter 22 verse 21. You know what that verse is? It's the last verse in the Bible. The last verse in God's word. Now listen to what this last verse says. It's a message. But who's the message to? It's universal. He said, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. what it said in verse 17 of the same chapter of Revelation. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. You know what? There's a universal grace for everybody. That baby in the manger is not just, it's not just for a few people. That baby in the manger was grace that came to this earth. It was universal. It was for anyone who would believe in and accept him as Savior and give her life. If it was not, you could burn in hell and look at God and say, You didn't include me. But God did include you. You just wouldn't believe it. You just wouldn't accept it. That message about grace in a manger is universal. It's a universal grace. That's full of riches. It is full of riches. Oh, that, that, that manger, that, that holds that, that symbolic baby there. There is so much riches in the grace of God. It's a matter of fact. It's all the riches that God has. It's available to us through that baby. And you'll prove it. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7, where it speaks of the riches of this grace. That baby that came in, and, and that grace that was found in the, in the manger, it, it demonstrated the riches of God's love. You want to know how God loved you? How much He loved you? God loved you with everything He had. All the riches of heaven. It's found in his grace. That was found in the manger. That was found in the manger. That was found in the shepherds. And the thing in the heart. Listen to what he said in Peter. First Peter chapter. First Peter chapter 5, he talks about. The battles that we're in. We're all in battles today. And I want you to, to look at what he said here in verse 20. Well, let me go back. In verse 1. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Verse 7. Come on, the word of God is good. See, let's get the food and all of them if you want to. He said, casting on the cares of the people who look at it. And you know what? When he when he's writing this down, it's a very troublesome time for me. They were being persecuted. It was a hard time for you for Jesus. He said, casting all your care upon him, boy, care for you. 
be sober and vigilant, because your adversary the devil was a roaring lion walking around seeking whom he may devour. That's what the devil's doing today. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But look at what he said in verse 10. But the God of all grace, the God of all grace. You know what he's telling us? He said, You can find peace in the midst of that storm. He's saying that you can find peace. In that battle that you're in. How do we find peace? We find peace. Through that grace that was in the manger. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can find grace. In him. But the God of all grace. That calls into his. Eternal death. By Jesus Christ. After that y'all suffered a while. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, save you. He said, He'll strengthen us. He'll save us. He'll give us peace. That's the message of grace. It was in the manger. And in John, can't keep turning all these scriptures, but in anyway, 2 John chapter 3 tells us that we can find mercy. Mercy. In the manger through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know something? I can take that baby.
is the solution. You got a problem? This is the solution. And here's my I get to how to do this is the solution. You know, who's laying in that engine? It was the total God. Because you say they're unsaved. And so all of the triunity of God brought the solution to this earth for my relationship with Him and for the sin that I have. Now, An interesting, interesting thoughts so in Exodus chapter 35, verse 8. God told Moses, now by the way, that word God, all of you have been coming on with you know, you know what that word God means. It means the Godhead, it means, the, it means three, it's the title of the Godhead. And when that word, the word is used in the Old Testament, G-O-D, capital G-O-D, it's the total Godhead speaking to Moses, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now notice what he said. He told Moses to build a tabernacle. And so Moses started building the tabernacle. And you know what God told him? He said, when you get the tabernacle done, I will come and dwell with the people. Now, you know what that word dwell means? That word dwell means pitch my tent. That's what God was saying to Moses. He said in the, in the tabernacle, he said, you build the tabernacle, and he said, I'll come and I'll pitch my tent. Where did he pitch his tent? He pitched his tent in the Holy of Holies. Can I just tell you? There wasn't a tavern that the high priest ever went to the Holy of Holies and called one day. Why? Because that's where he pitched. Look with me, if you will, John chapter 1, verse 4. John chapter 1. Look at what he said. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of our own God. What did you find? What did, in that verse, what did you find? Look what it said. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt. Dwelt.
So they have the tabernacle in the Old Testament. <coughs> God pitched his tent at Jacob of Israel. In the manger, he got pitched his tent with us. Oh, we have all kinds of 